This episode of POMCAST is sponsored by Pearl Soho. Since 2002, Pearl Soho has inspired knitters around the world with their fresh approach to traditional needle crafts. They're known for their spectacular colour, natural fibres and approachable patterns. They love to knit as much as we do. At pearlsoho.com, you can find tons of free patterns. They're really great. I've definitely knit several of them. Uh, And there's tutorials as well. And you'll also find all the supplies you need to cast on. Here at Pom Pom, we especially love Pearl's gorgeous selection of yarns. And in our winter 2021 issue, Adela Dutra used Pearl Soho's worsted twist for her very striking pink noise pullover. An absolutely beautiful 100% merino wool. It's fair trade certified and meets the rigorous responsible wool standard. A progressive approach to holistic animal welfare and land management that allows for complete traceability from farmer to mill. And we love that. We do love that. And you know what else we love? We love that Pearl Soho is offering our listeners a 15% discount off their next order of Pearl Soho brand yarn, fabric or notions. Just enter the code POMCASTFEB at checkout. So you need to go to pearlsoho.com, use the code P-O-M-C-A-S-T-F-E-B when placing your order and hey, that's 15% off. It's that easy. Just note that this offer can't be combined with any of the discounts. I mean, that seems fair, Lydia. Seems more than fair. In fact, I think I will be using this discount. Nice. On to the podcast. Hello. That was great timing. God, we really nailed it there, I feel. I know, even with the online lag, we've really, uh, we're just very in sync. Uh, so hi, welcome, you know, after what, 71 episodes, we finally got in, t- in time. Uh, hi and welcome to POMCAST, the podcast brought to you by Pom Pom Quarterly, that's a knitting magazine, and here we are to talk about knitting, crafts, wool, uh, all those things under that category and outside of that category and in between the category. <laughs> I'm Sophie Heathscott and I'm joined by... Lydia Gluck, hello! Hi, welcome, this is our... Well, our first chat episode of 2022. It is. And I actually had kind of forgotten that because it seems like 2022 has been around for a while. But it really hasn't been here very long. 22 long? (laughs) She's already off. (laughs) Creaking into the podcast groove. (laughs) Um, Well, how are you doing, Sophie? I'm all right. As you say, it uh, feels like 2022 has already been a, around a while. Um, we're recording this uh, in early February. I like seeing the signs of spring around this time. I spotted some snowdrops the first time this weekend, so that lifted my spirits. Um, what about you? I also spotted some snowdrops and had a similar reaction. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> yes, it's nice now that we're getting a little bit more light. I know that every year this cycle happens in this part of the world and every year the winters feel very dark and then the spring starts to just peak peak up above the frost a little bit and you start to think, like, oh oh, good, things are changing, as they always do, but it's good to get the reminder. What's the the quote, like, oh, to be in England now that spring is here? Something? Oh, now I'm going to have to Google it. Sounds like a real quote to me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Who said it? Come on, tend to hooks. Yates, Keats, uh, <laughs> uh, Virginia Woolf. Uh. <laughs> oh, to be in England now that spring is here. It's uh, Robert Browning. There we go. Long have people appreciated spring. Yeah, it's a poem. Um, so we're not in April yet, but uh, that's where the next line of the poem. Um, but it also brings to mind uh, all the paintings that David Hockney was doing at the beginning of 2020, where he's like, well, they can't cancel spring. So let's just uh, remember that. That's true. Spring is not cancelled. Hooray! Hooray! All right, so what's a tangent to go through (laughs) to get where we are now? Well, speaking of spring, we will be speaking about the spring issue, issue 40, which is uh, coming out very soon. But before we do that, let's just uh, settle back into the armchair of chat. Um, What's what's happening with you, Lydia? It's been, uh, been a good couple of weeks since we've had an episode of Chat Out. So uh, what tidbits do you have? <laughs> I enjoy the armchair of chat as a um, a visual. Uh, yes, I, I feel that I'm in the armchair of chat. 
I feel um, that's, that's, you know, that's what I want to invite the listeners into. Exactly. They're getting into the armchair of chat yeah. with us, you know? Comfy armchair, comfy chat. Yeah. Well, my latest um, excitement is that I have taken on a horse share, which means that I have a horse to look after three days a week, which is very exciting because it has been a lifelong dream of mine to have a horse ever since I was very little and very into horses. And I had a little bit of a break from horse riding and horsey stuff. I say a little bit of a break, really quite a long break from when I left Wales when I was 18 to about six months ago when I took up horse riding again and it was immediate um like I fell in love with it again basically immediately and so it's been a great joy to reignite this passion um which was just kind of dormant I guess because my life didn't wasn't really conducive to horse riding and I chose you know going to live in big exciting cities over carrying on with that um but yes yeah, so now I have this horse called Jessie who I can look after three days a week and ride um, alongside other bits. So that's very exciting for me. And it has resulted in my Instagram feed being almost entirely horse related because I got <laughs> really into watching videos of horses. Um, also, it brings me one step closer to being like Lisa Hannawalt, the uh, like illustrator who designed all the characters for Bojack Horseman. <laughs> if anyone knows me at all, they'll know that's my favorite TV show. And um, Lisa Hannawalt loves horses and has a horse. So, you know. It just it makes me more more like the horsey pe- people that I want to be. <laughs> I think there's something really important about I've read somewhere about doing the things you did when you were younger and how like intrinsic that is to happiness. And uh, you are galloping towards that dream. I really am. I would recommend yeah going back to a thing that you really loved and I, you know something like horse riding. There, it's quite you know it can it doesn't have to be, but it can be very expensive, and that is obviously an issue in terms of access. So it's not. You know, but there, I don't know. Now that I've find myself in a position to go back to it, it's been so great. I can't really describe how much happier it's made me. Um, so for someone who may have never ridden a horse, what is it that's set you alight about this? Why is it uh, so great? Other than that horses are beautiful, I suppose. They are very beautiful, yes. Or well, at least I think so. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I think when I was younger... I didn't really ever interrogate why I liked the thing. Because obviously when you're younger, you're just like, yeah, this is what I like and I do it. And my parents just sort of let me get on with it. Um, And I was around other people who liked horses because I was horse riding with them. And you're always like, yeah, obviously horses are great. And going back to it as an adult, most people I know don't ride for whatever reason. And so it's like, oh, yeah, this isn't a thing that everyone loves. (laughs) But of all the things that I do, knitting, sewing, all the things... Horse riding is the one that I'm most confused that not everybody's super into, I think, because it is just that like deep joy. And I think it's because it's kind of exhilarating. You know, it's sort of like an extreme sport in some ways in that, you know, once you get going, once you're sort of skilled enough, you can be going really fast on a horse. So you're getting to like borrow the speed and agility of an animal that's able to like run much faster than you are and jump much higher than you are. So there's that aspect of it. But on a kind of more like, you know, you're not necessarily always like charging around. It's more like you get to have this like really interesting communication through. It's essentially all through touch with an animal Um, and it goes both ways. And so like the better, you know, the horse you're riding, the better the experience is. And it's like a real like conversation, um, like a really subtle conversation and actually learning coming back to it as an adult. I think I'm the kind of riding I'm doing is a bit different as well and I'm learning a lot and it's just it's a very like there's something very fulfilling I think about spending time with an animal in a way that you are sort of talking to each other but without sounds and also there's like the kind of you know there's horse riding and then there's like grooming the horse and hanging out with the horse and that bit I think especially is quite therapeutic um and also because this horse that I've got um, as mine part time, Jesse, he's like a big horse, so it's quite nice because you can like properly lean on him, <laughs> like literally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can probably lean on the horses of most sizes, but he's like, you know, his back is about the height where my head is, so like I can properly have a little lean. Horse support, exactly. Support. It's good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I feel like I'm like very. It's so great to hear someone talk about something they love, and you're like, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Happy for you. 
Uh, well, how about you? What's going on in Sofland? Yeah, I realised actually, we're talking about like, what have I done? It's always, I don't know, do you have that thing where people say what you've been up to? And you're like, um... Yeah, you're just like, uh, <laughs> nothing? I don't know. <laughs> St- I don't know, it feels like so much of the, like, uh, I don't know, the past couple of years where it's like, I've just been existing, all right? Um, but I did do actually something very exciting, which I'd mentioned on the podcast a little while ago, uh, that I wanted to set up a repair cafe. Uh, and I did the first... Uh, meet the the maiden voyage of the repair cafe uh last month and it went really well so i'm excited about that that's so great and how frequent is it is it a monthly thing yeah so it's uh once a month so uh obviously because the first one was a success it's definitely definitely always going to be a success and get better and better and better yes um (laughs) yes i uh i feel like I was saying about hibernating over the past couple of years it's like oh great this is actually you know something that could like have legs and keep going and more volunteers and we could do other stuff with it and then I was like why wasn't I doing this before and I was like oh right yeah the whole world was uh surviving uh a pandemic you know yes yeah that's so exciting though what kind of things did get did get fixed what kind of things got got fixed <laughs> got mended, <laughs> mended. um we mended a hoover, did quite a few darns, and um, we, when I say we, I fixed a crochet blanket, which was very interesting because the it's one row, if you think of how a crochet granny square is made, one row was of a, a weaker fabric, a weaker wool that started mm-hmm. to deteriorate. So it was a nice little brain teaser to take that out and then sort of recrochet the links like you could obviously you can re-crochet around the base mm. bottom bit but then also link it up to the top chains um yeah so I'm very excited about that because it's bringing together a lot of things like you know, community and mending and making and environment and sustainability so yeah it's exciting to bring all those things together and uh yeah I'm hoping it will continue in a good way <laughs> happening in pom pom i hear you ask lydia tell me please what what's going on in pom well as you said springtime is very exciting for many reasons snowdrops one reason another reason new issue of pom poms coming out we've got issue 40 um which is on sale from the 24th of february and the theme that we had for this issue was dreamscapes dreamy dreamy landscapes dreamy feelings and we've got a lot of like lovely mohair kind of floaty fabrics pastel colors what else so what am i missing i was gonna say if you like mohair you're in luck with this <laughs> yeah. issue. it's sort of a little bit more abstract forms in mm. some ways i think the way some sort of colors come together and some shapes and yeah i feel the uh yeah i keep saying floaty is the word i want to say because that kind of airiness of the mohair there's um a real sort of softer interpretation of the patterns as a more dreamlike feel if you will if you will will. (laughs) and i will it's always exciting to get spring going with some uh knitting excitement and we should talk a little bit about where this was shot as well yes it was shot in austin at the eber s barrientos mexican american cultural center and it's just such a beautiful backdrop i'm trying i'm like just about to open the magazine but it's gonna make it's ambient sound it's ambient sound (laughs) <laughs> I say MSR, people, people yeah. love that, don't they? <laughs> Some people do. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like a, a really beautiful, um, again, kind of dreamy backdrop. Got lots of like lovely kind of textury light colours. Yeah, I think the the structure, the, the what's the word, the structure, the architecture mm. of the centre. It's kind, of, it's quite hard mm. in comparison to the knits, and I think there is this really beautiful contrast between the hard and the soft uh for a landscape it really does um yeah make the knits seem more the more ethereal in mm. their in their softness and shapes yes yeah and it's just like an interesting context for them it's very exciting do you have any favorites 
I do, yes. I was going to say, I'm sure that people know where to find these, but you can go on to Ravelry, where you will see all the patterns, and you can go on to the Pom Pom website, where we have a blog post with all the info there. And of course, we'll have the show notes, where anything particular we talk about, we'll have that on the blog as well. And what I'm going to talk about is coming up right now. So I love the cardigan, we love them all, that's always the disclaimer, but I love the cardigan Floaty, mm-hmm. Floaty, um, and that's by Edda Lilia Gurmansdottir. What a wonderful Icelandic name. It's almost like a Czech, but or like a chessboard, mm. but you've got blocks of shifting colour, like a tessellating mosaic, pink, uh, pink purple mint fantasy. <laughs> just try that on for size um, it's lovely and it has a bichet boucher lamb's wool and ching fibre silk mohair and it's just dreamy in it's the regularity of the shapes I think there's something like a little square block but also with the softness of the yarns and the mohair mm, just really mm. into that yes and also again we always love everything Cloud Bow is a real special one in this uh, issue, which is by Reed Keys. And it's a dress. Yeah, I think it's our first dress. Possibly. It is, yeah. There's a dress think... in Shetland Trader, but that's a book. But oh, yes. Yeah, that's true. It's our first dress in Pom Pom, the mag. And I know what you're thinking. Don't think that. You can also make it as a top version because the pattern is in the mag as well. But she's used, yeah, lots of mohair scraps, lots of pastely neon scraps to come together to make this amazing floaty dress. Again, if you're thinking that about dresses, it uses six millimeter needles. So you can just whiz through that on a lovely big open gauge to make something yeah, really exciting. And I guess instinctual, we were talking about the more mm. abstract constructions and colors. Yeah, we can put something together get to improvise a little yeah yeah I have to say like I've never been mega drawn to making knitted dresses I think partly just because although it does get quite cold in the UK it doesn't really get like as like I remember when when we went to Oslo I feel like there were people wearing yeah (laughs) people wearing knitted dresses and I was like oh yeah that makes so much sense here where it gets colder um but this sort of floaty mohair one I can imagine yeah I feel like I could wear that here so dreamy. Mohair dress moment. It's coming. Moo hair. <laughs> Moo hair. <laughs> uh, people who've been listening to the podcast for a while might remember that silly joke I made years ago. Anyway. <laughs> Just all podcasters. Oh, do you remember when we went to Oslo? We saw. Oh, do you remember that? That's where we are now in the recording. Oh, dear. Oh, what, what, are you, what are you lining up on your needles? So I was very pleased. I was in the office earlier this week and we had some of the spring samples there in London ready for Unravel, which we will talk about later. Um, So I got to try on just a few of them quickly. And one of the ones I tried on was Leonora, which is a cardigan by Pope Vergara, um, which is like the likes of which we have never published before. So it's it's a mohair background. Imagine, if you will, a mohair background. I'm there, right. And then you've got little intarsia, a soft sort of intarsia shapes, so with curves in them, quite abstract shapes in various yarns, including thicker mohairs, or we've got a few um, variegated merinos, um, and there are beads, again, and and they're kind of in little floaty cloud-like sections, Um it's hard to describe this cardigan because it is pretty out there. I say, of, I'd, I'd say of all the things we've ever published, this is probably one of the more, um, what's the right word, eccentric. But I love it. I mean, obviously I love it. It wouldn't be in the magazine if we didn't love it. But um, I feel like it, it's very, there's something very 80s about it as well. You know, there was that kind of phase of knitwear when jumpers were like art objects where you yeah. get like all these like wild intarsia and like fun beading and like you know bat wings and just like a lot of like it's all happening you know all the ideas they're all in one they've all been put into one garment and I have always really loved that as an aesthetic um and so unsurprisingly I love this cardigan and I also think it would be a great way to use up some scrappy bits the version that we have in the mag is kind of longer and it won't surprise anyone 
if I say I'm going to probably make a more cropped version, such is my way. Also, I don't think I've ever done much beading with knitting, so I'm quite excited to give that a little bit of a go. I've never been, it's just never been something that really kind of went with my usual taste. Like I've always liked beading as a thing, but just, you know, never been drawn to doing it myself. Um, But this might be the time. Nice experiment. I've got to give a shout out for this cardigan's um, plaited epaulets, I guess you call them, Mm -hmm. on the shoulders. Love it. Yeah. Anything you can imagine, it's on this cardigan. It's fantastic. And then the other pattern that I have earmarked for today for my favourites, because my favourites keep changing from this issue. But this morning I was looking again at the Syriform uh, socks, which are one of the most hilarious socks when they're not on a foot I've ever seen, because I think all of us really enjoyed all of the pictures of the samples as they were being made, Um, because it's a a sock by Marie Regnier, and um, the yarn is the Lang Yarns Jawal, which is a real good classic uh, workhorse sock yarn that comes in such an amazing array of colours. But then alongside um, the Lang Yarns lace, which is a mohair, big surprise, shock. <laughs> um, so it's a sock that is comprised of regular sock yarn and mohair, which is very exciting because it means that you get to use more mohair and have nice fluffy warm feet. And mohair is actually a very strong yarn so it's it's pretty well suited to being in sock form um but it's a they're ribbed socks and so when they're not on a foot they look very funny and long and thin like kind of cartoon somebody we work with said that they looked like quentin blake feet i think yeah, yeah. it's like little pencil socks when yeah <laughs> um and as probably a lot of long time listeners might know i love making socks uh it's a great background project if you will um and I think I will be making probably several pairs of these because I do have... It was also good for using up bits of mohair, I would imagine. Nice. Well, more mohair, more patterns is issue 40, pretty much. Um, and as well as the patterns, we have our usual offerings of recipes, articles and tutorials. Um, I'm very excited about the Payaki uh, tutorial, which is a Polish chandelier decoration, a traditional celebration of spring. Um, that's by Karolina Merska, uh, who's done this beautiful tutorial, especially for Pom Pom. Yeah, I'm excited about having a go at that. Yeah, I was lucky enough to meet Carolina. She's got a beautiful shop um, on Church Street in London, which is, in London terms, pretty close to our office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're talking probably a 40 minute walk. Her shop is absolutely beautiful and it's got some of the payaki there and also other incredible Polish handicrafts and other sort of more local to her sort of London items that you can buy and cards and just I remember going in there and just being like wow the shop is so beautiful and I bought her book which um, is all about making payaki and then she very kindly agreed to do a special tutorial for pom-pom so yes I too am very excited about making those I have bought the supplies so we'll see hopefully soon get some time to make it Definitely, that's step one. Yeah. And we also have a honeysuckle cream puff recipe, which is like a delightful profiterole-esque uh, puff. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with cream, I'm interested, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thanks, Stephanie Gantz, for uh, writing that for us. And also we have an article uh, by Lilith Green of Old Maiden Aunt um, called Making a World. We have, and it's lovely to have Lilith um, it's always lovely to work with Lilith, but I was thinking recently that she, um, part, she's she been kind of involved with Pom Pom since the very early days. I think possibly since the first issue. Um, yes, Megan when, wrote, uh, yeah, Megan about. wrote a piece on her. Um, and yeah, her yarn is incredibly gorgeous. If you've not seen it, I would recommend checking it out. But also the article is very beautiful meditation on her um, connection to making. So we hope you have enjoyed this introduction to issue 40. Um, a reminder again, we'll have all the info on the show notes of the blog if there's any yarns you like the sound of, any patterns you like the sound of, and you can find the links to uh, get your copy of Pom Pom on the website too. Of course, it's also available in lots of wonderful local yarn shops local to you, so check them out too.
Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, very briefly, we are going to be going to Unravel very soon. And this will be um, our first trip to an IRL show since Unravel happened at the beginning of 2020, I believe. Yeah, it did. Yeah. And Unravel um, is also is a show that we, our first ever show as Pom Pom was Unravel. So it's one that we've been going to for quite a long time. Um, and it is in a very beautiful little place called Farnham, which is an hour outside of London in the Maltings there, which is a kind of community and art space. Um, and it's a very beautiful old building. But what's even more exciting and beautiful about it is all the great yarn and knitting related stuff that's going to be there very soon. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame that we're recording this. Uh, well, this is coming out after Unravel, but <laughs> we have not yet been. So what do we imagine will happen? <laughs> I mean, I always love seeing the projects people are wearing. It's always a great thing festivals are good for, um, you know, spotting all the good knits and getting inspired by them. Indeed, yes. And it's also, it's always really lovely Um because so much of the work we do is remote and even more remote than it used to be, like from the people who um, make the POM things and read the POM things. It's always really great to get to chat to POM cats IRL and podcast listeners, the true POM cats IRL. Yeah, Yeah, I hope we meet some of them. That'd be exciting. Mm. So yeah, we'll have a little weekend doing the show. What else do we predict will happen? <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably buy some yarn. <laughs> nice, yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> we'll also have all the samples. Uh, that's a great thing about shows. Uh, when I say seeing other people, what other people are wearing. It's also, we have like a lovely clothes rail. We like taking them to shows and have all the samples laid out so people can uh, see things uh, in real life. And uh, following that, I suppose we do have trunk shows. I'm just going to say this as an Mm. additional thing that a lot of the yarn shops, especially now uh, shops open more regularly. um, We will have some of those samples taking trips uh, around the country. And that's UK and US at the moment. So we'll have more news of that on where's the best place to find out this information, Lydia? Well, it's on our newsletter. (laughs) (laughs) nice nicely done yes there's lots of great stuff in our newsletters including trunk show information but also we have little staff recommendations every week on a friday which are sometimes craft knitting related but sometimes not a bit like this podcast (laughs) yeah (laughs) yes so we are looking forward to seeing those of you who are coming to unravel sophie and i will be there at various points so you may catch a glimpse of us And yes, as well as, of course, our trip to Unravel, we will be bringing you more podcast episodes over the coming weeks, um, including more interviews like the one that we had with Lydia Morrow and more chat episodes between me and Soph like this one right here. Armchair chat. Armchair chat, exactly. It's a good comfy chat. It's a good working title. (laughs) And just to finish off, our fantastic sponsors, Paul Soho. Thank you. Round of applause for you because you've given our lovely listeners 15% off their next order at pearlsoho.com. Just enter the code POMCASTFEB at checkout and it's 15% off. Wonderful. That is a very, very good discount. Okay, let's go check it out now. See you, folks. Bye! Bye! Pomcast is produced by Lydia Gluck and Sophie Heathscott, along with the team of Pom Pom Quarterly Magazine. You can buy your copy of the magazine, ooh, including issue 40 that we just talked about, and subscribe at our online shop, www.pompommag.com forward slash shop. Big thanks to Eli Block for creating the original music for this show and for being an essential part in creating this podcast. Thanks as always to Megan Fernandez, co-creator and editor of Pom Pom Quarterly. And thanks to the whole Pom Pom team. You know who you are and you do your job so wonderfully. Thank you. You do indeed. You allow us to create this exciting podcast. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and why not leave a review? We prefer all our reviews to be five stars. (laughs) You can send any feedback or ideas to podcast at pompommag.com. And don't forget to keep in touch with us via the podcast group on the Pom Pom Ravelry Forum. Star wipe and we're out. (laughs) Oh yeah, star wipe!